Hello grade 11s and grade 12s. In this video, we will be doing a Newton's question with the object on a slope. Now, please remember to stay tuned throughout the entire video and towards the end because I give teacher tips throughout the video to help you get top marks and to minimize you making silly mistakes in your test. So let's read the question first and look at our picture. So it says a box of mass five kilograms. So they give me the mass of the box is being pulled by an applied force up a rough inclined plane. So this force over here is F applied, and we can see that it is parallel to the slope. The slope is inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal. So this angle over here is 20 degrees. And they give me the frictional force. The frictional force is 15 Newton. Now, because you are given the frictional force, this makes this question a little bit more easier. You know, it's not too difficult because in certain questions, in order to make it more tricky, they can give you the coefficient of kinetic friction and then you still need to find friction. But in this question, we're keeping it simple and we are giving you the frictional force. Now, remember, if the box is being pulled up the slope, up the slope, parallel to the slope, friction will act down the slope, but parallel to the slope. So friction is always in the opposite direction to the direction of the motion and it's parallel to the surface. And look at what the question wants. They say determine the magnitude of the applied force. So they're looking for this. Required to pull the box up the slope at a constant velocity. Now, the key word in this question is constant velocity. And in a previous video where I compared Newton's first law and second law, I told you that if you see the words constant velocity or uniform velocity or the object is stationary or in equilibrium or not accelerating, all of those keywords point to Newton's first law of motion. Newton 1, where F net is equal to zero. That's very, very important. Now, in this question, they don't ask me to draw a free body diagram, but I always recommend to my students to draw a free body diagram, even if they don't ask for it, because it's very helpful in answering our questions. So if I were to draw a free body diagram for the situation, remember the object is represented as a dot. Let's just recall some of the forces that are acting on this object over here. So we've got weight or the force of gravity, Fg, which acts straight down to the ground. Now, weight always acts straight down to the ground. Always, always, always. So this you call Fg or you can call it W. It doesn't matter. Then the normal force acts at 90 degrees or perpendicular relative to the surface. So if I were to draw it on here, the normal force would go like this, 90 degrees to the slope. So when I draw it on my free body diagram, I have to draw it 90 degrees to the surface. And I know it's difficult because there's no surface, you know, in this little area over here. But what I sometimes say to my students, so this is a really good tip from me, is draw the slope in, in pencil. You can erase it afterwards. So I hope you can see my slope over there. I've drawn it in in pencil. And you can see that FG goes straight down. Please use a ruler. I'm not using a ruler because this thing that I'm writing on doesn't allow me to, but you will use a ruler. It goes straight down. The normal force acts at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the surface. So here's my surface. I hope you can see I've drawn it in pencil. So the normal force will look, oh, no, you see, I must try and draw it at 90 degrees. So it's very difficult to do it on this drawing thing that I'm drawing on. But like that, I hope you can see that there's a 90 degree angle more or less. I mean, you don't have to measure it with a protractor, but make it look like a 90 degree angle. You know, you can't draw the normal force like this. That is not a 90 degree angle. This angle between the surface, and I drew the surface in in pencil, and the normal force, that must be 90 degrees. So that is N or Fn. Then F applied is going up the slope, parallel to the slope. So here's my slope. I just drew it in in pencil. So I'm going to do F applied going up the slope. That is F applied like that. Your frictional force acts parallel to the slope, but in the opposite direction. So here's my slope. Hope you can still see it. Friction is going down the slope in the opposite direction. And obviously I'm drawing it in super skew, but you're going to use a ruler and friction is going down the slope parallel to the slope like that. And then I can erase my slope. There we go. So that is how your free body diagram should look. And if they ask this in the test, 
it would be worth four marks because each arrow, each force would get a mark. However, I was not asked to do a free body diagram for marks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my free body diagram and I'm going to break weight down into components. Now, please grade 11s and grade 12s. If you don't know this already or if you've forgotten this, you need to make a note in your book that as soon as a box or an object or whatever is on a slope, so it's on an incline, if the surface is not flat, if the surface is inclined like it is in this question, we need to resolve or break down our weight vector into components. So we've got a perpendicular component, FG perpendicular, and a parallel component, FG parallel. Now, why is it called perpendicular and parallel? Because perpendicular is perpendicular to the slope. So FG perpendicular would look like this. See, it's 90 degrees to the slope. It's perpendicular to the slope. And FG parallel, why is it called parallel? Because it's parallel to the slope. Now, another thing that is nice to remember is FN and FG perpendicular are always in the same straight line. And FG parallel is always parallel to the slope. So you can see that FG parallel and F applied and friction, those are all parallel to each other. Then if your slope is at 20 degrees, so whatever this angle is over here, so in my case, it's 20. That is the angle over here, 20 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle over here. And then obviously you can work out that angle over there, but I don't need it. You just need to know this angle over here. So if this angle over here is 20, the angle over here is 20. If this angle over here is 45, this angle over here is 45. It's always going to be in that little corner of the triangle over there. Now, why do I care to do this? What did the question ask me for? They want me to work out the magnitude of the applied force. Now, if you look at your free body diagram, where is my applied force? This is my applied force. Is my applied force going acting parallel? or perpendicular to the slope. It's acting parallel to the slope. When I mean parallel to the slope, this is the slope. So forces acting parallel to the slope will be going like this, in this direction, like a up, down, that direction, left, right, up the slope direction. Not like this. There's a difference between that and a perpendicular direction. I hope you can see. So the yellow would be parallel to the slope. The blue would be perpendicular. So if applied is parallel, which other forces are parallel to the slope? I hope you can see that friction and FG parallel, all three of those forces are parallel to the slope. Now, why did I highlight them? Why do I care about the parallel forces? If I'm looking for F applied, so they say determine the magnitude of the applied force required to pull the box up the slope. I'm looking for F applied, which is a parallel force. So I need to consider all of the parallel forces. And I told you, or we figured out, that this is a Newton's first law question. So the net force equals zero. That means that if I go F net equals MA, we know that F net equals zero because it's Newton's first law. The word that gave it away, or the words that gave it away, were constant, yeah, constant velocity. Now, what do I mean by F net? Those are all the forces acting parallel to the slope. Why do I care about the parallel forces? Because I'm looking for F applied and F applied is parallel to the slope. So my next step is under F net, net force means adding all the forces together. F net means the sum of all the forces. So which forces? F applied plus FK plus FG parallel, all the forces that are parallel. So we go F applied plus FK friction plus FG parallel. The sum of those, adding those together must give me zero. You have to use those three forces because they are all parallel and we're looking for a parallel force. We do not use the perpendicular forces being FN and FG perpendicular. We don't use them because I'm not, I'm not looking for either of those. Now, the next thing that you need to do is choose a positive direction. So I'm going to choose up the slope as my positive direction. I'm looking for F applied. My friction is going down the slope. 
which means I will substitute it in as a negative. And what was friction? We gave it to you in the question. We said over here, friction was 15 Newton. So it's going to be minus 15. And then we've got FG parallel. Now, what I want you to do is we can actually work out FG parallel on the side over here. FG parallel. Let's look at our free body diagram. How would we get FG parallel? Well, let's look at this big version. I know it's not a free body diagram, but it's the same thing. Remember, or similar kind of diagram, remember this force over here is FG. This one over here is FG parallel because it's parallel to the slope. This one over here is FG perpendicular. Remember, I only care about FG parallel. Now, how do I find FG parallel? Remember, this angle over here is 20. This angle over here is 90. So I'm looking for FG parallel. And FG parallel is opposite the 20 degrees. And which trig ratio do we know that uses opposite? Yep, sine. So to find FG parallel, you say FG sine theta. And this will always work if you're trying to find FG parallel. Obviously, if you use sine for FG parallel, you use cos for FG perpendicular. Now, what is FG? It's mass times gravitational acceleration times sine of the angle. Again, this will always work if we're trying to find FG parallel. Now, what is the mass in this case? It's 5. What is G? G is gravitational acceleration. It's always 9.8. And what's my angle? 20. I can work this out. If I do that on my calculator, I get quite a long answer. I get 16,75898702. You can definitely work that out, but don't round it off if you do work it out. So keep it to at least six decimal places. What I'm going to do is when I substitute in for FG parallel, instead of working out the long decimal, I'm just going to substitute in 5 times 9.8 sine 20. So FG parallel is equal to this thing. I'm going to substitute that whole thing in over here for FG parallel. Okay, so to recap, we're looking for F applied. Friction is going down the slope. Look at your free body diagram. Which way is friction pointing? It's pointing down the slope. That's why it's negative 15. FG parallel. Which way is it pointing? Look at my arrow. FG parallel is pointing down the slope. Now, grade 11s and grade 12s, if that confuses you, think about this. If I had to chop off this force over here, so if I had to take away F applied, which way would this box slide down? Would it go, would it go up the slope or would it go down the slope? I hope you know that it would go down the slope. So it would slide this way. Why would it slide that way? And a lot of you will say, ma'am, it'll slide that way because of its weight. You are right. It will slide down that way because of its weight, but not just its weight. It will slide down because of the parallel component of its weight. So FG parallel is pulling the box down the slope. And remember, we chose up the slope as positive. So FG parallel must be negative. And remember, we just worked it out. It's 5 times 9.8 times sine 20. So I'm going to write it in just like that. And I know that that, writing it out in that form, makes some people feel uncomfortable. So you can definitely write out whatever that is equal to. Remember we said it's 16, 758, blah, 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 blah. Just don't round it off. You can never, and this is a massive, massive teacher tip, never, ever round off in the middle of a question, only at the end. So remember our goal, we're trying to find F applied. So how do you get F applied by itself? You move both things to the other side of the equation. So we're going to take negative 15 over. It's going to become positive 15. We take negative 5 times 9.8 times sine 20 over. It's going to become a positive. And we basically will add those two together and we will get 31,75,8,9,8,7, dot, dot, dot. Let's round that off. 31,76 Newton. And they wanted magnitude, which means I don't need to give a direction. So again, if they say magnitude, you don't need to give a direction. But very, very important teacher tip. If they don't say magnitude, so if they say determine the applied force, you must give a direction. 
or you'll get it wrong. We will mark your answer wrong. Okay, so that's how you work out the force applied. Please, please, please remember that you never, you should never forget FG parallel and FG perpendicular. So you need to almost make a note in your brain that stays there that as soon as you see an object on a slope, there will be FG parallel and FG perpendicular. So many of my students forget about FG parallel when an object is on a slope and they get the entire question wrong. Another important tip is that you see how I start off with plus signs. That's very important. We only put the negatives in when we substitute a value in. Okay, and because it's Newton's first law, it's equal to zero. Let me know what other Newton's questions you want to see in the description bar, in the comments below, and check out the links in the description box for more Newton's law videos. I hope that was helpful. I can't wait to see you in another video. Subscribe for more. Goodbye, everybody.